I am so blown away right now. Hillary had LeBron James come speak at one of her rallies. All she got was 700 people. They were almost all white, even though they were trying to get black folks to come to it. And it gets even worse than that. As you know, she has a Jay-Z concert and 10,000 show up. I mean, Trump has 20, 30,000. This shows how rigged it is. But we've got incredible news with the FBI coming out and saying, hey, we're not going to go after Hillary on the new emails. But first, a very powerful John Bound report. Marina Abramovich, grandmother of the performance art movement and a modern adherent to ceremonial magic found in Aleister Crowley's religion, Thelema, wrote a very personal email to Tony Podesta, according to WikiLeaks. It reads, Dear Tony, I am so looking forward to the spirit cooking dinner at my place. Do you think you will be able to let me know if your brother is joining Tony Podesta? Regarded as the most powerful lobbyist in Washington, D.C., is a brother to none other than John Podesta, chairman of the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign and counselor to President Obama. That dinner Abramovich spoke of was nothing less than a Thelemic occult ritual. In spirit cooking, Marina uses pig's blood, which most resembles human blood, as a medium to connect the spirit world with the material world. The ritual takes place in the kitchen, which is considered to be the heart of the home. The goal of the ceremony is to convert matter into energy so spirits can feed on it. Marina derives her inspiration from the popular belief that spirits still need food, even though it is no longer solid, but in the form of light, sound, and emotions. This simple revelation may finally pull back the curtain to the masses on the ugly truth. Infowars and others have been desperately trying to tell the masses for years. The occult is the religion of the elite. Just research the influence of Lucius Trust in the United Nations or review the 1990 Nebraska U.S. District Court case between Paul A. Baraki versus Lawrence E. King, exposing a powerful pedophile ring linked to political figures, high-level U.S. military commanders, and the intelligence establishment. All of this overseen by Temple of Set founder and retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino. Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton live in this dark world. Bill Clinton wrote in his biography that the brief foray into the world of voodoo furthered his fascination with the way different cultures try to make sense of life, nature, and the virtually universal belief that there is a non-physical spirit force at work in the world. Back in September 16, 2016, Fox News posted a letter from hacker Guccifer claiming the goal of the Guccifer project failed because he was unable to fully expose the Illuminati, the Council, and their crimes. He writes, Hillary Rodham Diane Clinton is one of the high priests, a goddess of this occult satanic shadow group. One must see their evil and profoundly corrupt nature to understand what I am talking about. Guccifer continues, so I apologize in front of the unknown soldiers who struggle to take this fight against these monsters to a glorious end. Many of them are risking their lives while doing this behind the computer screens from inside or outside the system. And now bombshell revelations are surfacing from Anthony Weiner's recovered laptop as the New York Police Department is investigating allegations that Bill Clinton performed sexual acts on underage girls as young as five years old. In the coming days, right up to the election, Anthony Weiner's laptop will reveal evidence of an international child sex trafficking ring tied to Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. She's worked like a demon, as you know, as Secretary of State and as a senator and in the years since. One thing about Hillary, Bill was just a good timing guy. But Hillary, she's an animal. Hillary is the one that I promise you, she pulls the strings. She pulled them in Arkansas. She pulled them in the White House when she was there as the First Lady. And my God, if she gets to be president, what you see out here now is going to change. We thought it changed with Obama. There's nothing compared to what's going to happen with Hillary. If all of this is just a little too much, remember, Benjamin Franklin prophetically said, only a virtuous only a virtuous people can run their own affairs. We'll be Ladies and gentlemen, we are now 
Only two days out from the most historic election in U.S. history. The stakes could not be higher. Now, obviously, in the last two hours, the FBI director came out, James Comey, and said that she's completely exonerated in all the emails basically forever. This is when new WikiLeaks emails have come out showing they lied to Congress and the FBI and were, quote, covering up evidence. But see, they diverted the public into the 650000 on Anthony Weiner's laptop and Uma Abedin, Hillary's girlfriend. And we had Larry Nichols, the former top Clinton operative, on last Sunday. He's joining us again. He said word for word, Alex, they're setting Trump up. Next Saturday or Sunday, Comey will come out and completely exonerate her. Now, we're going to play that clip for you from last Sunday. But, I mean, we have the insiders. I talked to a Pentagon insider. I talked to a former high-level CIA uh, official today. And they all told me the same thing. The military is being told, stand down. Hillary is going to be installed. Now, if you want to know how James Bondy this is, before I get to any of this news, I'm sitting here. We've got a bunch of TV networks, CNN, Fox News, you name it on. It's LeBron James of the Cleveland Cavaliers with Hillary with close-up shots. I sit down 15 minutes for airtime, and I'm sent a photo by, let's just say, insiders on the Cleveland Police Department to my phone. Document cam, please, for TV viewers. I'll describe it for radio listeners. This is the crowd that was there when LeBron James spoke. And I said 700. I was corrected. I went back and read the text message. The crowd is 300. Now, if you actually watched the newscast, even on Fox, they would not show you this. It was LeBron bowing up. It was a rock star party. These are total winners, and meanwhile, the police are sitting there running security, sending me this photo. By the way, this was sent by a uh, high level. Okay? Let's just say that. High level. Now, that's what's going on in this country. Literally a tiny crowd of a couple hundred in front, uh, maybe a hundred or so behind her, with close shots to create the illusion that she's really the coolest person to vote for because, you know, she's hanging out with folks in the hood like LeBron James. I mean, this is the ultimate joke. LeBron James was going to cancel, I was told by our police sources, but then Hillary threw a complete fit. And the word is they were basically paying people off the street to come in. Now, they also fell on their face because they tried for a week to recruit in mainly black areas and hardly any black folks showed up. And there's massive low black turnout right now being reported for Democrats. And joining us is Roger Stone at the bottom of the hour on that front. So this is a landslide for Trump, but they are intending to steal it. This is confirmed. This is so historical what we're living through. Now, let me just stop right there. If you think I'm joking about it and you're a radio listener about the crowd of 300 she had, I just showed the photo to TV viewers and then showed you the mainstream media with close-up shots to deceive the public. You can go to our Facebook from last night from the special broadcast we did. One video archived from us live last night for four hours. Guess how many views it has. We can pull it up on Alex Jones' Facebook right now. Just go to Alexander Emmerich Jones' Facebook. See the video box area. You, you scroll down. There you go. That's it. 837,000 views. They broke the video in two. There's another one with 300 and a couple. So when I say a million, it's actually a million two. But there it is. One video, 837,000 views. On YouTube, 200,000. On our internal streams, 400 plus thousand people. How many millions is that? Two and a half million or so? We have two and a half million viewers last night, separate from even my terrestrial radio show. If you go to Hillary's Facebook mentions, because only, quote, celebrities get them. It's not the Facebook Live thing. It's Facebook mentions. So we're celebrities, so we get one. When you go to hers right now, guess how many watch today live with LeBron James through now? Because it counts live and then afterwards. That watch the archive. 5,500 as of 12 minutes ago before I went live. Donald Trump has crowds of 30, 40, 50,000 people, on average 10,000 in small towns. 
because he averages between big towns and small towns. Hillary has 300 people. They have to do ultra-close shots. Let me show TV viewers again. We're showing their ultra-close shot of the crowd. Now, back out, sent to us by the Cleveland Police Department. That's the wide shot. And notice they know exactly what to send us. Didn't ask for it, nothing. They know exactly what we'd need. Ladies and gentlemen, this is massive, massive fraud. You go to her site. You go to the video. You can see it. And you got all of her videos combined. It's like something like 6 million views. And they're pumping it. But the main one, LeBron James on stage, that one's at 6.5 million. The one with LeBron James has 5,000 as of I checked it. That's, a, I think, another compilation of videos. The point is, is that they are pushing this with Facebook and Zuckerberg and everybody totally behind them. And they're in total panic mode. But when Hillary puts out a full hour-long video, 5,000 watch it. Little 20-second snips for people that have no attention span, 6 million. And InfoWars is only one small part of this. But this is the whole media, every TV channel, force-feeding you to go watch this. And what they're giving you is close-up, blown-up shots. It just shows what the WikiLeaks show. How rigged it is, how they're rigging the polls, how they're rigging the numbers, how they're rigging on every single front, these issues, and how stupid they think you are. Now, that said, I don't know what's going to happen in two days. You can say technically it's just the rest of the day and tomorrow and then it's election day, but it's, it's a little more than 48 hours until we're in the thick of the election, and we know... Bev Harris, who's bipartisan, she's a Democrat. She said Hillary is clearly going to steal it. They're not going to let Trump win, but he is the leader. The fraud is in with this fraction, fractionating thing they're doing. Then they've caught him with the programs. Then WikiLeaks comes out today and says they're not going to allow Trump to win. The fix is in. He is a big liberal. Any real liberal just wants to have integrity in our voting system and is admitting massive vote fraud is now happening. Want to go watch your full report? Biggest election fraud in history discovered in the United States. That was from last Monday. Seems like 100 years ago. Time now what was moving super quick. Now it's moving like really fast but also super slow. You know what I mean? It's like we're moving forward really fast but I look back in time a week ago seems like 20 years ago. So, so much is unfolding. So much is happening. And this is such a huge time to be alive. But here's the bottom line. Larry Nichols, we're going to play the clip when we come back, came out. And he said, well, he, he called me last Friday. I talked to him Saturday and Sunday and talked to other sources. He talked to Supreme Court Justice and others. And he said, now, I don't know if the military is going to do something or anybody else, but as it stands, and I don't want to demoralize people, but. They're going to give it to her. Trump's winning my landslide. But Alex is stealing it in Philadelphia and Cleveland and Miami, Alex. And Comey will announce on Saturday or Sunday that she's totally exonerated. Watch. Then he came on air and basically said the same thing. And you're just sitting here watching the country stolen in front of you. And with all these poor, sad lottery ticket mentality people that wanted free health care and wanted this and that, and they have no idea it was always a screw job, it was always meant to be a screw job, and then Gruber and the others go on TV and make fun of you, and now, when we come back, even before the Larry Nichols, the Washington Post, all of them are now celebrating, and they said, yes, non-citizens will decide the election, they are voting, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So they're going to have this big celebration to collapse our borders more, bring in more third world, and just uh, basically, I guess, make Americans slaves. I, I mean, I mean, it's on, folks. It is all being announced, and Obama said it's okay for illegals to vote. Guess who shouted out reportedly gun and, and made a run at Trump to make him uh, you know, uh, look like a fool and a coward? Which he wasn't. He stood there very strong until the Secret Service forcefully took him off the stage. He came right back. It's a bird dogger, a Democratic Party blogger operative. We can put it up on screen uh, for TV viewers. So isn't that just special? That story is also, again, posted to Infowars.com. Update, Trump attacker was bird dogger.
That's in the WikiLeaks. Uh, you know, go out and attack people, basically cause a disturbance. Uh, mentioned in WikiLeaks. So there you go. Oh, and there's another report in the Washington Post. The Washington Post finally, I guess, because the word came in, the fix is in for Hillary, they think. They've got to go ahead and act like they're distancing themselves from her because, you know, they got to fight for her to get her in. But then once she's in, they can play the part of opposition and not lose all their readers. Well, too late, you're totally discredited. There's a new big uh, giant graphic image we should tweet out, uh, and it's uh, Hillary. And if you scroll down, Hillary Clinton's lying is the behavior of a sociopath. Uh, no, it goes a little bit further than that. In fact, I tweeted an image out today where folks found a photo of her that really uh, crystallizes who she is, where she looks like a demonic clown. And that's what people that are around her closely describe her as, is a very, very scary person. Now, they have created such an upside-down world that if I don't want to pay for Ukrainian, Mexican, Chinese... Venezuelan, um, you name it, people to come in, have babies for free, get put on welfare. Welfare's not enough to live on, though. Then you go out and get a job and then drive down wages. You're not a bad person. I get why you're coming here. I would, too, if I was you. The point is it's designed not to even rise you up, but to create a permanent underclass. And then they've got the nerve to have all these states trying to pass laws. Some have done it, but not put it on the books. That is, the governors didn't sign in Illinois or, or California this year to uh, let illegals vote. And now, all over the big Spanish uh, language channels, they have arrogant, entitled people going, if you live here, you're a citizen, and you should be able to vote. Really, can I go to Mexico or Venezuela or Ukraine or Nigeria and just show up and say, I've been here a year, I work here, you've got to let me vote. They would kick your butt. But now... The video's up on Infowars.com. President Obama encourages illegals to vote, says there is no penalty, and if you vote, you're a citizen. He repeats what the pundit says. And in case you think it's some type of mental typo, it's all scripted, because we've seen it literally in hundreds of articles. Here's the Washington Post. Could non-citizens decide the November election? Just like the Bloomberg the same day, last week, came out and said, illegals are voting nationwide, but Trump is still wrong about it and it doesn't exist. And it was designed to be mental illness and just totally confuse everyone and go, what? Because, see, they want to get this now so inculcated that when illegals get caught voting, people go, okay, it's their right to. I mean, folks, if, if I showed up in Mexico, tried to walk in with a U.S. ID card, tried to vote, they would kick my butt. Because they still have common sense of nationalism but only here oh you just got here oh here everything's free and you can vote what this is total checkmate folks but again it's a conspiracy theory alex jones and donald trump are totally insane it's totally racist there ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen there is listen to me there is no law if you vote you're a citizen even if you're not a citizen this is the throwing it in your face. This is the crapping on you and rubbing it in. This is only going to get worse. This is like Alice in Wonderland Tea Party. It's so crazy. Here is Obama. Of the millennials, dreamers, undocumented uh, citizens, and I call them citizens because they contribute to this country, are fearful of voting. So if I vote, will immigration know where I live? Will they come for my family and deport us? Not true. Okay. And the reason is, first of all, when you vote, you are a citizen yourself, and there is not a situation where the voting rolls somehow are transferred over and people start investigating, etc. The sanctity of the vote is strictly confidential. I can't believe I heard what I heard. The president isn't even questioning whether the, the, the person who is an illegal is voting uh, outside of reminding people that if you're a citizen you vote but it's very clear that the question is being asked was about illegals voting and afraid that they might be reported to, to border security you're illegal you, you cannot vote and, and the president of the united states is saying don't worry no one will be spying on your catching you it was an encouragement when, when maybe whether you're for the president against the president whether you're, right, let's stop right there this is all done on purpose. They're passing laws that illegals can vote. 
that violate federal law. And they can bring in enough people then, give them free stuff, and have checkmate. See, in, in a republic, it's a representative democracy, but there's checks and balances, so the majority can't enslave the minority. Well, now, because Christians pass laws to try to end racism and things, the left couldn't beat that anymore. The Democrats, so they flipped it and now just are turning the minorities into gang-related, race-related control groups. Now, most, quote, minorities, who are really the majority in most areas, aren't even bad people. But regardless, everyone's basically whipped into accepting this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is total lawlessness. You have to understand that. And I love the reporter. She's, <laughs> because they are citizens, and, I mean, you know, they're contributing, and she's so angry. She's so entitled. And if you said to her, well, can I go to Mexico or can I go to the Philippines and vote? Well, you're a misogynistic white pig, so no. But people of color do. The entitlement, the attack on logic. Can we play the clip just the first few seconds again to hear just the hissing and the smacking of the lips and the over-the-top arrogance of this young woman? Here it is. Of the millennials, dreamers, undocumented uh, citizens, and I call them citizens because they contribute to this country, are fearful <laughs> of voting. So if I vote, will immigration know where I live? Will they come for my family? Oh, uh, yeah, because I guess she, that's right. She's this famous person that isn't a citizen. Uh, again, again, again stop her right there. And they, they make people victims that's, that's not a citizen. And the big loving media and Goldman Sachs run system, oh, it cares. No, it wants to exploit you. And they're going to bring down Europe and bring down the U.S. and bring down Japan and bring down South Korea, the few places that still have a middle class, and then you have no hope. But you'll be dumbed down and poor, so you will never know. And you're, you'll be walled off forever as the jet copters fly above you, off of their big walled rural compounds while you live in big uh, Gina 21 controlled cities. This is the admitted globalist plan where you can't have a car, you can't have air conditioning, but it's liberal, so it's okay. We're coming back with Roger Stone, but I have first I'm gonna play the clip of Larry Nichols. That guy is that guy's the real deal, folks. Let me just tell you. Let me tell you, that guy was in black ops for the CIA all over the world, and that guy was a hitman for the Clintons, okay? He was their handler. And then he wouldn't go along with killing kids. He's like Tony Montana. So they got rid of him, he exposed him. He knows every move because he trained him. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. He called it on the FBI. He dead nailed it hundred percent. A hole in one. All right, coming up, we're going to have Roger Stone on with us. He's on a, uh, NBC News right now. Uh, they're talking about the fact that a federal court did say no, Donald Trump and Roger Stone's poll watching program and exit poll program is not voter intimidation. So that's been struck down. There is massive evidence of election fraud pouring in. Larry Nichols is warned of this. Uh, again, explain how they bust the people around to vote. Now we have all these election officials and Democrats admitting they have people voting 10 times apiece. We have the Washington Post saying, of course, illegals are voting. They're going to decide the election. I just showed you that article. I have Obama saying, look, illegals, go ahead and vote. You're not going to get in trouble because even if you're an illegal, voting makes you a citizen, which is what the, the reporter had just said to him. If you just joined us, it was the most astonishing video. This is the level of mind control that we've gotten to in this country. And then they say, why are you racist? Okay, racist, uh, an illegal isn't a race. I mean, sure, they're predominantly from China now. China surpassed Mexico. But it's just people coming in and then they're just instantly allowed to vote? What the hell? But I can't go to their country. And it's just like, shut up, racist. Meanwhile, Larry Nichols told us this. He said it last Sunday, and he told me in, in several other interviews we did, he said they're going to come out Saturday or Sunday, they're going to distract away from WikiLeaks and all the bombshells, the fact she was caught lying, the fact that she was caught in there saying we got to cover this up, this is illegal, the paper play. The FBI's got a problem. They've got to prosecute her or there's no justice in this country. They're sending generals to jail as we speak that did one one millionth. I mean, that did nothing. Hillary's got her maid printing off her secret documents and doing stuff with them. She's, you know, Sandy Berger sneaking secret documents out in his underwear and not getting in trouble. They're busy selling it to, you know, foreign countries. All that's okay. Because she's a woman, see? Just like it's okay if you're a foreigner because anybody who's not American is good. 
As long as you're from somewhere else, have your baby free, vote, you get to be a citizen. Now, we can't go to your country and do that, but it's okay because this is American hospitality. American hospitality is like, you know, give them your wife, your kids, your house, and just blow your brains out. Or Alec Baldwin will call you a racist. Well, I mean, who cares if that joke calls you something? These are traitors, folks. These are elites that are tax-exempt, that are creating chaos and creating permanent underclasses, and they're waging war against the American people. And Donald Trump 110% gets it and is saying it. And that's why, whether he wins or loses, he's won because he's brought forward how the operation really works, how we've been screwed over, and what really has happened. The bigger question is, how do we, the producers, start withdrawing from the system and just having a revolution of noncompliance? Because I'm ready to do it. The police aren't perfect, but they're more in the game than the general public. They're ready to do it. The military's ready to do it. It's truly a saddening time to see all of this unfolding. But Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen, is set to win in a giant landslide. He is ahead two to ten points now in every battleground state in mainline, cheating polls, ABC, Reuters, Bloomberg, who all sample 9, 12, 16, 20, 30, 50 points. They are sampling in the average CNN poll. Look it up for yourself. Click on the methodology of the poll. When you see the poll, click. There'll be five pages of crap. Read it. They are sampling in CNN polls on average 30 plus points for Hillary. And Hillary now has a two point lead with 30 plus points added. CNN's the worst. I've seen them do on debate nights 46 points. More. D did you just hear me? 46% more Democrats than Republicans, and then she's only winning by 68%. That doesn't even make sense. She should almost be zero, except about 25% in that particular poll were independent. So that's how they were saying, you know, that, that the they did, you know, this massively larger number for, for, for Democrats because they had such a small sampling rate, what, 24% for Republicans. This is how they're doing it. They're totally rigging it. This country is in total revolution. Hillary has LeBron James come out, NBA superstar, and they had 300 to 400 people. Cleveland uh, PD, uh, and, I mean, high level, estimated the crowd of actual people that came in, not mentioning Secret Service and her operatives that they numbered at 200. Well, I mean, the text is 300 in her crowd and another maybe 400 in her honorage. But they're estimating 300 people that came in that they had to basically wand and check. 300 people, and the word is from the police, they were having to pay them. I mean, I've got it all right here. I'm not going to show you the whole text, obviously, for TV viewers, because it's a group text of different police officers and other folks involved, but um, let me just show you this without the whole text history. This this is the crowd as LeBron James spoke for TV viewers. Okay, couple hundred here, people in the bleachers, maybe 700, 300 that came in that weren't part of her operation. Like, let me just read you this without actually showing it so I don't show any of these phone numbers. Let me read this to you. Uh, it's stuff about communists that want to kill me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here it is. At Hillary's rally, they said they are expecting 2K, barely 300 here, and that's with LeBron making an appearance. Pathetic. But see what the media say. LeBron is supposed to cancel. Her staff is on the street trying to beg people to come in from a friend. Hope all's well. Now later, 700 total. Most of them, though, are part of her entourage. They're inviting all the drunks from the Browns game to come in. And then Comey just cleared Hillary again. They are telling all the black Browns fans to come and see LeBron speak, but they're refusing to. The whole crowd is basically white. Blacks in Cleveland hate her. <laughs> Oh, my God. This is the type of stuff I'm getting. So much of it, I can't even keep track of it. What a country. What a world. What have we become? What have we become? And Larry Nichols, insider, managed the Clintons, ran them, 
for the CIA. Nichols is not supposed to say that. It'll come kill him, but that's what he did as a Green Beret. That's what they have as, like, handlers for people. And he said last week that the word is, Alex, this was from a Supreme Court justice, that next Saturday or Sunday they're going to declare the whole thing's over and it's meant to just Take away from WikiLeaks. And boy, was he dead on. Here's part of that clip as we go to break. Looking guns that we have right in front of us. Absolutely. Now, they're trying to back us off of curtailing voter fraud or at least staying after it. They're trying to stop the media from, they're trying to give the media an excuse to stay away from WikiLeaks. Now, Comey was given an option, apparently. He, was, he had explained to him, and the reason I know I believe this is because I did it to people, Alex, when I was with them. Somebody went to him and said, you know, Jim, here's the deal, buddy. If Hillary loses, you're toast. Your name is toast. Your career is toast. You're done. And there's a good chance if an investigation ensues, you will be the one going to jail. Now, the best thing for you to do is to help us. He had no choice. So he participates in bringing out this this. Uh, this diversion. These emails. This diversion. No, 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 no. Let me stop you. Six months ago, when the, when the Loretta Lynch thing happened, you've been saying for a year there will be no indictment. There will be no indictment. <laughs> Bill Clinton gave her a letter, a list of FBI people and prosecutors they got dirt on, and boy, you were proven right. So, so yeah, you're saying yeah. again, you know what transpired? Yeah. Now, the plan is, and you'll notice that even when they did this, the miraculous change took place. Number one, Mr. Good Guy, James Comey, who everybody says is Mr. Impeccable, the first thing he does is he breaks the 60-day rule. 60-day rule means back going back to... All right, we're going to come country. back with more of this than Roger Stone straight ahead. But in, in somewhere in this hour-long interview, he says it'll be Saturday, it'll be Sunday, it'll be totally exonerated. And again... Well, I'll tell you more when we come back. <laughs> By the way, we were sitting around talking about brainwashing earlier because that's how you can basically decipher what's happened to the public that actually buys into Hillary's bull. And we were making the joke that everybody thinks that anybody that's a good public speaker must know neuro-linguistic programming, something I've never studied. And then these idiots online say, Alex Jones is, is involved in neuro-linguistic programming. Do you know who's involved in neuro-linguistic programming? Because I went and looked into it 10 years ago and I kept hearing that I was using it. Let me give a little newsflash. Someone yelling, someone saying wake up, someone changing the pitch of their voice up and down. What's funny about it is I'm the opposite of neuro-linguistic programming. I'm trying to get you to get out of your thought pattern that you've been set in and to think for yourself. I'm here to raise your brainwaves. National Public Radio, though, admittedly, does train their top people in hypnotism, and that's what they're doing. When you hear someone talking like this, that's one of the most basic forms. You ever heard those classical music stations where it almost sounds like the host is falling asleep and finishing their last word? That is a basic form of it, and yes, it's going on. I don't sit here and craft what I'm doing. I just go with the facts, and I'm here jumping around like a chicken with my head cut off trying to wake you up. But they were just showing me, and there were people were saying I'm, I'm a neuro-linguistic programming master. In fact, I saw a bunch of mainstream news articles actually saying that last week, like, he's such a skilled speaker the way he manipulates people. He says he doesn't use a teleprompter, but that's like this famous jazz guy saying he doesn't use music. He's the most manipulative person we've ever heard. It's just, we don't even know how he does it. He's so dangerous. I mean, you know, I'm dangerous. I got, I got the Washington Post. I got Bloomberg. I've got the L.A. Times, I've got the Chicago Tribune all saying illegals are voting nationwide. It's very reasonable. And I have Fox News Local from L.A. and I have all these other channels with the president going it's okay for illegals to vote. And as long as you get here, you have a right to vote. And the people go, it's riveting. What, to not lie to people? To go, look, they claim illegals aren't voting in this clip. Then the very same person saying it's preposterous is saying illegals can vote. What's riveting is I have an attention span and a memory. And it's not even that good. I'm completely freaked out at this point. The fact that even the globalist top national writers who go to Gruber conferences to try to learn how to lie to people and deceive the crowd. Why don't you learn how to tell the truth for once? 
you might get ahead in life. Because let me tell you, when a society hits this level of corruption, let me give you a big secret of evil, since you seem to want to know about it. The knowledge of evil, by the way, is, doesn't mean one is engaged in it. At the beginning of a very sovereign, good, honorable system, being evil is very dangerous because people will kill you. Or they'll ostracize you. They'll shun you. But in the mid-levels of corruption, when everybody starts to do it, there's still a lot of folks to feed on and a lot of dumb people, and you can really get far ahead, and there's lots of slots in being a piece of crap. And if you just want to have temporal power and more accumulation of crap and, and dominate dumb people, boy, that really makes you feel good. How about enlightening them with Promethean fire? Or die trying. You can get ahead, but in the final cycle... When the pendulum's swinging into Hades, being a traitor is the plague. All the slots are filled. You're cheaper than dirt. No one wants you. You're going to be used as kindling. But now people go to college. They admit this. To learn how to lie and learn how to rip people off and learn how to work in the system. By the time, you, you, know, you know when they say, and it's kind of an allegory, it's a story he told. It's not really true, but but it's it's a famous story that they tell about um, Joe Kennedy Sr. Big stock market guy, but he's really just a money launderer and booze runner, big deal, whatever. And he said, oh, I sold out a month before the great crash of 29 because the shoeshine boy was telling me what stocks to buy. But there's something true to that. When you've got major colleges teaching how to rip the system off, teaching how to get all the free welfare payments, teaching how to be a little politico, you got in at the wrong time being a scumbag. See, now's the time, if you were just a sociopath, to be on the side of reform because that's what's coming. But you don't know that because you're too knuckle-dragging and you like to be evil. Now, we did just get Roger Stone with us 20 minutes the next hour. He's got a bunch of big news. Federal court just came out and said no. He and Donald Trump are not voter intimidating, doing classical exit polling. Uh, and uh, that's uh, and, and poll watching is what Trump's doing. But first, Larry Nichols, halfway to this clip, he, he nailed it. He said literally several times, by next Saturday or Sunday, they will, ex they will fully exonerate Hillary. This is the scam. He was told by a Supreme Court justice. Here's more of the clip. Yeah, man. The plan is, and you'll notice that even when they did this, the miraculous change took place. Number one, Mr. Good Guy, James Comey, who everybody says is Mr. Impeccable, the first thing he does is he breaks the 60-day rule. 60-day rule means back going back to Iran-Contra, you know, arms for hostages. After that election with Carter, the media and everybody in the ethics committee said, no longer can you bring something out 60 days before an election. And he also Major. leaked it. He didn't just tell Congress <laughs> week, two weeks before. No, or, he, or he got it out. <clears throat> so he breaks that rule. And then here comes Hillary saying, get it all out. Get it all out. Now, here's what they've got going for them. They've got the Republicans saying, get it all out. They've got Trump saying, get it all out. And, of course, you've got Hillary saying, get it all out, with the intended purpose being the emails that Comey is going to release. Those emails have already been purged, Alex, and there's nothing in it to incriminate Hillary or Obama. Meanwhile, no one looks at the new WikiLeaks coming out daily or the total coup de grace that came out last week with Obama and Hillary saying we got to clean this up and cover it up. And the campaign already has the press releases ready to go. And as far as I so know, Rush some Limbaugh of the was mainstream right. Rush media Limbaugh. already have the papers already ready, the front page is ready to print, saying that Hillary was innocent all along. This whole email thing was a Republican fraud set out to confuse the American people. It was never real. She walks away with the election. That's the plan. Now, the problem they're having, Alex, internally, the FBI guys have gained forces and All right, let's go back now. surprises for Comey. Roger Stone's with us, 20-something so minutes in the next hour, former head of the Trump campaign of my intel. Correct me if I'm wrong. Massive black turner, uh, turnout, record for Trump. Massive low turnout for Hillary. LeBron James has a rally for 300 people show up that were actual citizens. I have that from high-level police department in Cleveland. Showed the photos earlier. They have close-in shots. Um, he's ahead in most battleground states. There is massive election fraud happening, though. 
and I've talked to high-level sources. They're threatening the military and everybody. You better stand down and shut up when we install Hillary. So a depressing moment on that front. But I tell you, uh, it isn't over to the fat lady sings. We're going to challenge any evidence of fraud. So we got a lot to cover coming up here in the next hour. Roger Stone, where do you want to start? Oh, well, Alex, uh, I'm delighted to be with you. It's nice to get off the telephone because I've been in an endless round of conference calls with lawyers. Uh, and I don't particularly like lawyers anyway. Uh, but the breaking news is that the ruling against Donald Trump, Roger Stone, the Republican National Committee, the Trump campaign uh, in StopTheSteal.org was overturned by the appeals court in Ohio late this afternoon. Uh, there is no evidence uh, of any plan on our part to threaten or intimidate voters in any way. This follows on the heels of our victory in the Arizona federal court yesterday. Tomorrow, uh, we will have the adjudication of this lawsuit in uh, Nevada, most likely Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, uh, in North Carolina, I now believe that we will prevail everywhere because the facts are on our side. We merely seek to conduct a scientifically neutral exit poll. Which follows State collect. Department rules, which you've always done, of course, and that's on record. And I've seen the training you guys are engaged in. It is impeccably done, better than what mainstream media does. The Democrats are running around electioneering inside the polling booths. We've got video of it ourselves. It's pouring in. Evidence of frauds pouring in. I mean, clearly, do you agree with me? Donald Trump is in the lead right now. A, and then B, or are they trying to steal it? Uh, I definitely think the momentum is with him. Uh, all of the uh, swing states now, he's moved into at least a top, a toss-up category where he was slightly behind. Remember, it's, it's all directional. It's not what the poll shows in terms of the actual number. It's who has the momentum and who is gaining and who has gained. And two days out, he's got momentum in a dead heat, what you're saying. Exactly. I don't know what to make of this most recent... Uh, uh, FBI, stay there. By the way, I haven't even gotten into Hillary and the whole Jay-Z, Beyonce deal where they have her doing the simulated tear up the police cars, knock out windows, riot stuff. They're singing about using cocaine, raping women. The N-word is screamed over and over again. If Trump did something like this, I mean, the, some edited tape with him saying women throw themselves on you, can do whatever you want. That's not sexual assault saying a woman throws themselves on you. But the point is, is I'm digressing. We have this coming up. There's so much cussing. There's a beep every second, basically. Hillary's at this clapping and then praising it while it happens. But then they have these things crying, saying Donald Trump hurts our children. When it was a secret tape, they're the ones putting it out. I mean, it is the death of common sense. That's coming up too. But Roger, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. You were getting into not knowing what to make of Comey. Uh, well, the word is, is that they had to divert off of all the WikiLeaks and then make this look like she was being persecuted, making her the victim right at the end. It is a total uh, November surprise brought to you by Comey, whose law firm and you know family work with the Clintons. Yeah, I, I problem here is that it won't wash. As I understand it, he's referring to the 33,000 emails that were withheld. This does not address the 650,000 emails that have been discovered by the New York Police Department and are in their possession, uh, as well as in the possession now of the FBI and presumably the Justice Department. My sources tell me there are indelible evidence of multiple crimes uh, contained therein. Uh, and I know for a fact that one of the reasons why the FBI reopened their investigation was because of an allegation that the nation of Serbia was shaken down for $2 million in order to get a meeting for their president with Barack Obama, and that that money was uh, siphoned and sent to the Clinton Foundation. That is a crime. Mr. Comey is well aware of that allegation. So the notion that Hillary will, uh, will avoid prosecution uh, is really challenges a believability. If there is, if Hillary should narrowly win this election and try to use the federal apparatus to shut down investigations of all this new evidence, you will have an insurrection in the country, you'll have widespread civil disobedience, uh, and you will have paralysis. She will be unable to govern. I just do not believe the American people 
will stand for it. And Roger, I totally agree. We've got a war game this. Has in the... these records. Go ahead. I totally agree with you. We've got a war game. And let me give you the FBI's announcement just to understand what you're saying. You are correct. So let me just lay this out. The NYPD was going to do a press conference two weeks ago. I had this from sources. It's now been confirmed. Even, you know, the head of Blackwater's come out and says his sources told him this. But this is that the NYPD has all these emails. It's full of underage sexting, pedophile connections, really horrible stuff. The, the, the NYPD was about to go public. It forced uh, the FBI to move because the FBI rank and file wanted it. But also Comey had to make it look like he was going to do something. But they now claim... The whole 650,000 emails, here it is, Daily Mail, also Associated Press, Comey claims they went through it all in just nine days, all 650,000, and he's saying all of it's open and shut now. So this is an attempt to put everything to bed, but now we'll see what the NYPD does. Yeah, I would think that having, they've, they've also read these emails and they have said that there is evidence of crime. Alex, put aside the sex allegations, please. Treason. Corruption pay for play uh, these are more egregious i'm not sure what to make of all and, of and, and by the way they're all confirmed in wikileaks already no one's getting in trouble right so uh, you, they're not going to be able to sweep this under the carpet uh this is a nice try but uh win or lose hillary clinton's heading for the big house one way or another all right, i'm gonna give it the floor we come back then i'm gonna flesh all this out i totally agree with you these are epic crimes never before seen this public. I mean, stuff might, stuff like this may have happened before, but it's never been this out in the open. It's a nice try at sweeping it under. It's not going to work. Where does this go next? The good news is law enforcement itself is really awake, really upset. The public's waking up as well. Roger Stone's our guest. Stay with us. Donald Trump, whether he wins or loses this election, no matter what comes out of it, is a total winner. He had courage. You've had courage. You've taken action. Globalism is on the table as a crony capitalist, anti-free market mafia system. Uh, the fact that the Federal Reserve is screwing us over is huge. The fact that our borders are being dissolved. Political correctness is in tatters. Humanity's on the march. It took Brexit 25 years with UKIP. In the last two years with Donald Trump, we have eclipsed that. Now, I believe he's ahead in the battleground states, the evidence shows, and I believe there's gonna be a landslide. But Hillary is trying to steal it. Roger Stone's been victorious with Trump in their exit polling and poll watching. Trump doing poll watching, exit polling with, with Stone, very professionally done, following state laws, doing exit polls. We go out and do exit polls as media. And they're fine as long as they think we're Democrats. When they find out we're patriots, they flip out and say, you just can't be here, period. Okay, you know, we know you're here for Trump to disrupt. This is happening on video. But the big news, Roger Stone, recap, because some stations don't carry that first little segment at the start of the hour, recap, the FBI has come out. Our Clinton insider said they're going to come out Saturday or Sunday. He said this last Sunday. Larry Nichols, we played it last hour. And they're going to announce that she's totally exonerated and everything. So if it diverts from WikiLeaks for seven, eight days, Trump takes the bait. And Nichols said, please don't take it. Covers the 650000 Comey comes out and says she's totally exonerated. But he had to because the NYPD was going to have a press conference, we've now confirmed, two weeks ago. And, and, and expose the, the horrible stuff, the treason, the treachery, the paper play that was in this as well. And so they had to basically have a timeout to stall people until we were 48 hours or less out from the election. Now they've done it, trying to take her weakness and make it a strength like, oh, look, she's been exonerated. But as you just said, nice try at sweeping this under the rug. Not going to work. Drain the swamp. I think it's going into hyperspace. Roger Stone. Yeah, I think the FBI director has worn out his credibility. He's now changed his position three times. It's very clear that he is acting politically. Uh, and there are career agents there who are not going to uh, stand for this. And you have the independence uh, of the NYPD. Uh, and I think they've made it very clear that and if there's any effort to sweep this under the, the carpet or to say that, oh, we reviewed the emails and there were no uh, evidence of illegality, that they'll release them all and then let the people decide what we have. Now, the truth is, prior to any of this happening, Comey had more than enough to indict Hillary. David Petraeus was indicted for less. Others have been indicted for less. The American people will get justice. I cannot see any circumstance, even if she were to win this election, in which she will be able to govern or actually even able to appear in public. 
without uh, without a massive civil civil uh, disobedience uh, and uprising by the people. We either are a nation of laws or we are not, and that is what we're going to find out here shortly. And we meanwhile, have. Sure. Meanwhile, Trump, I think, is zoring towards an upset victory here, which will negate all of this. Uh, I, I presume that in the period between the election and the inauguration. Obama will probably pardon everybody who's been involved in this sordid mess. That would be the safest move for the establishment, but they seem so arrogant these days. They don't have the class they had with Nixon. It seems like they might just try it. Very, very possible. But um, uh, just I don't think anyone should assume that any of these issues or the dynamic that we're in goes away. There will be no honeymoon Regardless of who is elected president, there will no be no cessation uh, uh, of tensions. The, this fight inside the country about what we want to be and whether we are a nation of laws or a nation of men is going to continue. That's right. Trump has just been the master of ceremonies, uh, basically here, and you and I and others in Drudge have been ringleaders, you know, here at the circus, trying to get folks awake. It's happened now. The, the worldwide awakening to globalism is only accelerating. And so that's the good news here is that we have come here to kick ass and chew bubblegum and we're all out of bubblegum. And I mean, it was in the Wall Street Journal and Associated Press, as you know, on Monday that major newspapers revenue is down 97.5% in the last quarter. That is, that is a, a, a heart attack with the heart completely dead. So the entire mainstream media is in free fall. We are all exploding with rocket engines so huge. The only danger is we might blow up in our ascension. Uh, it, 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 I mean, sir, I'm not exaggerating. We now, on average, are having 10 to 15 million video views a day. We did a live show last night. It had 3 million viewers. Just, a, just an internet show with no promotion. You're putting out videos getting 20 million views a week. There's, there's kids in farmhouses talking trash about Obama getting 68 million views a week. What the hell are they going to do? CNN doesn't get 68 million viewers in a freaking month. That, that's why they're so desperate to uh, get control of the internet. That's why they're so desperate to quote unquote regulate. That means shut down the internet because it has afforded us an avenue to communicate with each other that they never anticipated. In other words, the establishment, the media government establishment, no longer has a monopoly monopoly on mass communications in this country, and therefore it is the beginning of the end for the globalists and the two party duopoly that have run this country into the ditch. Meanwhile, this just came across my computer. Danny Williams is trying to reach Jay-Z, wants to ask him whether Black Lives Matter or not, wants to ask him about whether he's familiar with the 1994 crime bill, which has incarcerated an entire generation of young black men for the nonviolent crime of possession of small amounts of drugs. Maybe Jay-Z is unaware of Hillary's record of abuse of black people. Well, let's talk about that since you raise it. Um... I've seen the numbers, correct me if I'm wrong, because you're the guy that really is in there looking at them. Record low turnout by African Americans for Hillary, very high turnout for Trump. It, it appears uh, that looking at the early data in uh, the state where there has been early voting, that African American turnout has been substantially down from where it was four years ago and eight years ago. Now, that is, of course, partially understandable given the fact that Barack Obama is not on the national ticket. But at the same time, this is a key element uh, of, uh, of victory for Hillary Clinton. It's something she will have to have in order to get there. Um, I, I believe uh, the uh, examination of the 94 crime bill uh, and the entire um, uh, public exposure of Danny Williams, whose story I find extraordinarily credible, has undermined the voter confidence among African Americans for Hillary Clinton. Let's talk the scare last night briefly uh, out in uh, Nevada. Uh, I mean, now we know it's a Democratic Party operative that was there to bird dog. What is the point of screaming gun, gun, and then running at Trump? Just to make him look weak or something? Well, what I found particularly aggravating, Alex, and I was on with uh, Joe Biggs last night on InfoWars to talk about this, is within seconds of this happening, uh, we counted over 400 tweets blaming me, me. Roger Stone staged this to, uh, to gain sympathy for Donald Trump. 
this is some serious Alice in Wonderland stuff. And it shows how rigged it is. It shows how rigged. Now they admit it's a Democratic Party bird dogger uh, that WikiLeaks has covered. So why are they so scared of you? God, they're obsessed with you, buddy. Yeah, well, uh, you speak for yourself. You, they seem to have you in their sights as well. Uh, very hard to understand, but clearly the fact that this happened so quickly sheds the, the point of blame back on them. Black, back on David Brock and company. Well, it's they on. It's on drugs. He's a Democrat Democratic Trump. blogger, uh, bird dogger. I mean, it's it's it's. They've got the guy. So clearly you know, not staged by us, but it, it you know it it does make my heart jump because as I've told you many times, my single greatest concern has been for Donald's safety. What do they want to have him fall down or look scared or have Secret Service jump on him? Because instead, he was just sitting there staring at him. The Secret Service then takes him out. He looks graceful as he leaves, comes right back. I don't think it turned into what they wanted. They just don't understand Donald Trump. Alex, he is the single toughest human being I have ever met. This guy is the right man to send in negotiations with the Russians, with the Chinese, with our adversaries. He has ice water in his veins when it comes to toughness and standing up for the country. Uh, and he's not, he's not a physical coward like, say, Lyndon Johnson. Uh, and he knows he's taking his life in his hands. He has a very fatalistic view about it. He's going to save this country. Yeah, uh, tell, come on, it's time for Inside Baseball. Let's come back and talk about that briefly. you got to go. Then we got Larry Nichols coming on. Look, I traffic in secrecy. I'm totally public about my life and what I stand for, but when you are wear a journalist hat and have sources, uh, it's all about people having confidence in you that you won't release info on them, no matter it be positive or negative, unless they want it released. Uh, and boy, I tell you, I've been burned a lot because of that. You know, John Ronson said, I'm a sneaky in Bohemian Grove with me. I've got insiders. You can't tell people I went in with you. You've got a promise. And I said, absolutely. And two years later, he went on C-SPAN and said, Alex Jones didn't tell you I snuck in with him. Did he? And he actually used that to burn me. So you think about that. So, but but the point is, I, I got a lot of stuff, obviously, with the Trump stuff I can talk about and being all the papers. I don't care about being in all the papers. It doesn't do anything. I want to talk to real people, folks that care. That's who I want to talk to. You. You're, you're wonderful. I'm like in Mel Gibson's new movie, I'm told. Everybody's told me. I know I licensed it to him three years ago, but I haven't gone to see it. I don't care. I'm in a Mel Gibson movie. The point is, is that, he, like, drives around listening to me on the radio and, like, agrees with it or something. I, mean, I don't care. But they, and I'm not bragging. They asked me to be in movies, and I just don't even, you know, do it. Stone's got to leave in a minute, but I wanted him to get to this because, you know, he's told me stuff that I later saw come out or other people told me. And the fact was, a couple of years ago, Trump wasn't going to run. He knew what would happen to him. But he, he just finally said, okay, I'll just sign my life over. And it doesn't matter. And his wife backed him on it. And he expects to probably be killed. And Stone just let it slip, so I brought it up of how committed Trump is. Um, and it's amazing. So you said he's fatalistic about this. Let's tell people what, 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 what Trump's done. Well, first of all, just the number of states that he's reaching here, Alex, in the next uh, you know, 24 hours, this is a Herculean physical effort. Uh, I work for Reagan. I work for Nixon. I work for Bob Dole, all patriots. It's Herculean. None of them. Uh, you know, uh, exerted this kind of physical evidence, uh, 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 effort in the close. Trump is a Superman, uh, and he is uh, sees the race moving his way, not only in the swing states, but in some... No, but you Democratic said it. Let's state. talk about, you said fatalistic. Let's get down to the wire that they can't even make him wear a bulletproof vest. He just doesn't even care. This is so presidential. Well, he wore one in the summertime, and frankly, it was so damn hot and heavy uh, that he, he felt it was slowing down his performance on the stump. Uh, his family has begged him to take more security uh, precautions. Yeah, let's not let out security secrets. That's, that's an example. He just doesn't care, folks. That is so manly. You called him fatalistic. Go ahead and tell folks since you mentioned it. Well, I, I, in other words, I've said to him, don't you worry about your physical safety. And he says, look, I, I have to do this. I have to do this for the country. You can't run for president and not mix with the people. He is the opposite of that it. coward demon Hillary, isn't he? Well, I mean, I don't think she's well enough to go in public. I, I think she's got to rest up in between campaign appearances uh, because of her various ailments. Well, you got to come back tomorrow. Once again, this will be proven. Once what do we do if they steal it, which is clear evidence they're trying? Well, I'm going to be in Austin, so we'll have plenty of time to uh, plan exactly that. Uh, but I, I think it's important to game plan 
election day before you game plan what you're going to do the day. And, 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 and by the way, I agree with you, but I'm very honored. I guess you left that out of the bag. That's good. You're going to be here at the command base with us during the 52 hour global transmission that kicks off tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, I'm very, very excited about it. So I look forward to seeing you. Well, you'll have the run of the place. Roger Stone, you're a great American, such a truthful patriot. That's why they call him a liar and dirty trickster, because that's the inverse. His secret is he tells the truth and knows what he's doing. StoneColdTruth.com. I, I, I know you got to go because you got like ABC News there. Any other points that need to be made? Uh, you know, like I always say, victory or death. See you tomorrow. All right, there he goes. I wish I could tell you the stuff I know, folks. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm not going to give I mean, it's just crazy. The stuff they've done to Trump, nobody even knows about. It's wild. He just doesn't even care. He's just like, he is so committed. You can tell he's just enjoying it. That's what a real man does under attack, just turns it into, into a big game. And that's why he's like, if America wants freedom and wants their taxes cut and wants to be back on the path to being number one, I'm here. I, I love this country. And if you don't want it, you want that witch Hillary, then it's, she's yours. But he knows he's winning, and he isn't going to let her steal it. He's going to fight back and speak out. And down to the wire, folks, I can tell you, high-level groups have come to Trump, and they know he's ahead. And they've said, just work with us, and we will let you win. He said, I serve the American people. This happened yesterday. I can't believe the level I'm at in this, folks. If you knew how real this was, you would be crapping your pants. They came to Trump and they said that the, 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 the deep state, the older elements of it, Bush-connected groups. And they said, just say you'll work with us and just say you'll listen to us some and we will let you win. You are the winner. And Donald Trump told them no. The American people are going to decide. And they said, okay, buddy. Okay. And that was a warning last night. Guy jumping up with a, I got a gun, I got a gun. We're running at the podium. What Trump did? He just stood there and waited. Because Trump wants to beat these people bad, folks. When you're 70 and you got it all and you're not into molesting kids. Most people that get into this power, I guess they just start molesting kids. It's like, oh, what's new? I'll just molest kids. You, you, you know, a lot of people that are good, they actually decide to fight for freedom. And God, they've lied about him. And you know, I have a kinship with Trump because I've experienced the lies, the twisting, where you get up and they're like, Alex Jones is deeply racist and you know, hates Mexicans, no proof. Or Alex Jones hates black people. What the hell are you talking about? You know, I, I and Hillary's calling me this dark heart. Craig Gowdy on the committee over Benghazi said it best. She's above the law. She, they've corrupted the, the top of the government. All you can do is vote her out with a landslide. And let me tell you, Hillary and, and Bill and Obama are acting really skittish right now. Because they know it's hard to beat a landslide. I'm going to bed at like midnight. I'm getting up about 3 a.m. every day. I can't even sleep. I've never had any. I'm a guy sleep seven hours great. I can't sleep right now. And... Uh, I'm just very proud to be associated with Donald Trump and all of you listeners and good people of every color and wherever you came from. I love you. If you love liberty, you see through this, you want justice. It is really good knowing you. Let's play part of the clip. I won't get to it all, but here's part of, part of Gowdy. What part of this decision do you agree with? No, I, I don't agree with any part of it. I understand it. Just, that's the curse of being a lawyer is that you are able to understand the other side's argument. I just vigorously disagree with it. His argument is he thinks there's a specific intent element in a gross negligence statute. So it's not that I'm confused about it. I just fundamentally disagree with it. Okay, now he said that there were classified emails on Cheryl Mills' computer, the aide to Secretary Clinton. But then he would not say whether or not that was a crime, unless he looked at the case more in depth. How do you look at the case when you give someone immunity? It just, it, it doesn't square. Yeah. Hit pause. The, uh, the, the key parts at the end where he says, look, they're above the law. You just got to vote her out. But here's the good news. People now know the score. Whether they steal her from Trump or not, we're gaining momentum. We're fighting back. Resistance is victory. Laying down his apathy disintegration, atrophy, and death. We're on the march 
The Empire's on the run. I'm Alex Jones. This is the InfoWar. InfoWars.com. Spread that link. That's a big part of the revolution right there. I've pretty much always, in the last 15 years or so, shot a daily or two video for YouTube on top of the radio show. And, you know, I used to be happy when the video got 50,000 views, and I thought 100,000 was great, 200, 300,000. The average video is getting about a million views right now. That's a metric of how upset and awake people are, and it's only getting more intense, and we're just one platform in this fight. So as negative as some of this information is, it's overall very positive so that we can have an open discussion about what's happening. A lot of these new agers and folks, they just want to hear a bunch of positive stuff and say, you know, mystical thinking is going to fix things. And I'm not bashing those people, but admitting how much trouble we're in, that's what's going to turn things around and make things better, not just going along with anything. So I don't cover all this to take your hope. I cover it to give you hope to know the worm is turning. Now, Larry Nichols, battling cancer, just back from the hospital today. Uh, I really appreciate him uh, joining us. I'm so busy, I even hardly comb my hair, even though this is a slash TV show as well. <laughs> End up doing, people are like, I don't wear makeup on TV or anything. I like forget to even comb my hair. It's ridiculous. You're combing it on TV. Um, there's just so much to get to here. We're going to be talking to him in a moment, but I, I want to talk in the next segment, probably have him up for a full hour later this week. In fact, he is coming on during the 52-hour broadcast that starts tomorrow at 11 a.m., runs through Election Day and the next day, about the occult and the Clintons. He's the first guy I ever heard about the Clintons involved in the occult. Since then, I found an artic uh, article in the Washington Post, other articles. Bill Clinton wrote a book about it. His early years admitted he went to a voodoo school in Haiti. They had their honeymoon there. He likes the spirits possessing him. Uh, I mean, I showed all this yesterday on that special broadcast. I can't even believe it. And then I'm not saying with all this new WikiLeaks that all this stuff's code words. That's what the NYPD is saying. I don't know if this is innocuous. Most of these people are probably innocent in these thousands of emails with Podesta. But the police are saying, look at this, and the, and the, and the investigation got open because of sex texting and, 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 and then the, the Lolita Express. And then Breitbart's got articles, and the FBI's come out saying, yeah, we're looking at Hillary being on the Epstein plane. He got convicted. I mean, this guy was running little kids. So we're going to talk about that in the next segment. This is a short segment. I want to get into his prediction coming true. We already played it in the first hour, but Larry Nichols came on three times last week with us, and uh, we put out several reports. He advised me on Saturday after the FBI report came out last Saturday. I said, one of my insiders said it'll come out next Saturday or next Sunday, that she's totally absolved. This way they could block everybody from looking at WikiLeaks because they know the public's barely paying attention. Then it would be a big win for her to say, see, it was all clean. And Nichols helped train these people. That's why he's dead on. So we'll talk to him in a moment. Uh, but before we go any further, here is uh, Comey, the head of the Benghazi Committee, uh, saying your activism is now is to vote against Hillary. And then we'll go to Larry Nichols. Do we have Comey ready? This is what your viewers ha have to come to grips with. Please, go ahead. No oh, one uh, Gowdy, excuse me. <laughs> no one who sent classified oh, information was prosecuted. No one who received classified information was prosecuted. No one who destroyed federal records was prosecuted. Out of all of this, five immunity agreements and a really unusual investigation about national security matters with hundreds of classified emails, not one single person is going to face a legal consequence. That means this case is dead in the water, right? Uh, it, is, it, it is dead in the water other than uh, what I have said in the past. There are multiple groups in our culture who provide oversight. There's the executive branch, there's Congress, there's you and the media, but on November the 8th, the real jury gets to weigh in. And if they think that this Department of Justice has been politicized, they are welcome to replace it with another Department of Justice. And that's Trey Gowdy. Uh, no wonder you couldn't find the clip. You're like, what, Comey? On what Comey's decision. So that's the head of the, what is it, House Oversight Committee. So he predicted, he said there will be no indictment with Loretta Lynch. And he described what happened on the plane with Bill Clinton and her. He said that this is all a red herring a week ago. We got attacked for that. So he's been proven correct. Larry Nichols, the former Clinton handler, uh, is here to break it down. So, so Larry, what does this signify? Well, first off, it's nothing to be proud of, me and Mike. What it signifies, I'll just tell you the rest of it. The plan was to come out, prove that it was all nothing, 
and she'll have this big rally talking about, you know, how the mean old Republicans just were just a Republican plot. That'll be tomorrow. Day one. And then the thing that they've all got to do, all major media have got to turn in and submit to the Clintons, to their campaign, their Wednesday morning headlines about her victory or approval. This so this gives her now. control of tomorrow having to have all her campaign on to crow about how they did, never did anything, even though all the WikiLeaks show them hiding all the crimes, expunging evidence, selling paper play, espionage. All of it is black holed. All of it. And then the reason they want the headlines on Wednesday to be approved by the campaign is to give them the launching pad they need to, quote, unquote, have the mandate she demands. But more than that, to quell any potential resistance from people claiming foul over voter fraud and to stop Trump from having any reports. Because she's already been proven of being wronged and they've already got the talking point uh, that we talked about two weeks ago with other insiders on air uh, and, and, and off air that she, she was persecuted. She's got to shut down the alt-right plus the Republicans want to work with her because that's the group that discredited them. That's the narrative. And she's going to do one bang up job after this election, making sure the Republicans hold their fire from now on. You got to remember, Alex, if you were a Republican, let's say Craig Gowdy or any of them, after this election, Congress could have a hearing. They could have a hearing. They could pursue all of this stuff. But the best Congress could do, and they know it, and she knows it, Alex, the best they can do is recommend. Special prosecutor be appointed. And you just heard Gowdy yep. say it was over. That was a big deal. Yep. Now, when that happens, guess where it has to go? It has to go to the Justice Department to proceed. Then, let's just be honest. After the election, Trump complains about voter fraud, even if he has great amounts of proof. He's got to go to Loretta Lynch. Where has it got to be filed? Federal court. You know what happens in federal court. I mean, they've got this thing rigged every way but Sunday. And this is the final Democratic Party takeover. It's why Beck and the Republicans know it. They're just wanting to get final payoffs as we go to one-party state, as WikiLeaks has said. They put five more folks on the Supreme Court. They take our guns. They open the borders. America's conquered. End of the story. End of story. Now, let me say this, Alex. Remember what I've been telling you and your audience about for over a year now, the velvet coup, the silent coup. Coup. You're seeing it. This election is the end of it. This, this is the end of America, Hillary, folks. That's right. This is when Hillary and her minions believe that they have accomplished the task and are ready to set forth with complete and total transformation of our form of government and our way of life. They will pursue it aggressively. Aggressively. They're coming after That's the better coming. clingers. They're coming after the veterans. They're coming after, well, you know what that means, Larry. We've tried to fix all this peacefully, and we're not offensive, but I guess they're just making it real clear. Well, I've actually been privileged to get some information from the people that told me what they were going to do with this FBI thing. These are the same people. They have got. You told me high level FBI told you, Larry, tell Alex and everybody this is exactly don't take the bait. And Trump, they said, get this to Trump. Do not do it. And he didn't do what he should have. You know, we what else have we got to do, Alex? You know, I beg, we beg. Just don't take the bait. Come out and say that it, the fix is in and to tell people to be careful about this. Had he have called it when we came on there and told? He would have devastated him. He would have devastated him. I, I, I tried to... I... I can't control what I get a call from Trump. I try to get messages, and then, you know, I don't even call. I just, I, I know, it's he, he's not perfect. He wasn't battling the Clintons 20 years ago like we were. That's right. Well, and, wait until you hear. I know we're coming on break. Wait until you hear what they're doing with gun control. No, I feel. God, I wish it was some new country to get out of here, too. God almighty. We'll be right back. I'll tell you a couple of stories about fraud. The Bohemian Club, the, as you say, the Bohemian Club, that's where all those rich Republicans go up and stand naked against redwood trees, right? I've never been to the Bohemian Club, but you ought to go. It'd be good for you. Get some fresh air. I know nothing about the Bohemian Grove with Bill. 
I know about once a month Hillary would go out to Los Angeles. And she did it so regular that it became a bit of an issue trying to, why is she always going? Bill told me that she was going out there, she and a group of women, and she would be a part of a witch's church. And, uh, man, I, when Bill told me that, you could have hit me with a baseball bat. I tried to point out to him. He realized what had happened if that got out. Of course, my job is to make sure it didn't get out. Now, I don't know today if Hillary still partakes in <clears throat> the witch ritual. I, I don't know that I even know what the ritual was. But for the better part of many years, Hillary would go quite often, whether it was regularly once a month or maybe once every couple of months, she would go out on a weekend simply to be a part of it. All right, that was about a year ago, and we went up there. We don't just believe people, and I've known Larry 20 years at that time. We saw his medication, saw his diagnosis, the whole nine yards. I gave him a donation then. Uh, and we went up there to interview him because of the cancer, and it's progressed. He's just trying to stay alive through the campaign to expose these people. That's why I can't be on TV today. We've been up there. He's had heart surgery, you name it. I'm not going to get into all of it. He was in the hospital today. He's had his lungs collapse. He's been uh, resuscitated. He doesn't want me to say this on air, but then he tells me he's about to, you know, be out in the street. So I'm just going to tell you so he gets donations. Nichols live at AOL.com, PayPal. Send the guy some money. He needs good treatment. He's, he's been blackballed in Arkansas, everything, since he's exposed to Clintons. He's a great patriot. He's a real deal. Nichols live at AOL.com. Give him a donation. He didn't even ask him for this, but he don't want me to talk about the illness, but I'm not going to sit there and just say send him a donation. When the guy can't even get his treatments to keep him alive. It's very expensive, as you know. Larry Nichols, 58 Kingston Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034. Now, uh, Larry, folks need to make that donation. You told me 20 years ago she was into witchcraft. You even told me about the handler, who now has been the National Enquirer confirmed doing stuff for him. Right. Uh, I separately, you didn't even know about this. It actually been in an L.A. liberal newspaper because Tex Mars had a copy of it. I was in his archives making my Bohemian Grove film uh, 15 years ago, and I, and, I, and I got a copy of her actually there. And this isn't just normal, you know, new age stuff or whatever. We're not talking about crystals or whatever. A lot of nice folks are into all that stuff. Better than a lot of these mainline church people I know. This was, this was Aleister Crowley stuff. Now, you don't know about this, but I've studied it, so I, I looked at what it was. Well, it came out in the WikiLeaks that this high priestess of this stuff, who admits in her own writing she does it, blood, you name it, they take kids to these parties, whether whether they're really killing people or not, it's so horrific to show it all. She's come out and said, oh, you know, it's all just a big joke. I'm not serious. I'm not a Satanist, but her email address is 666 at the end. And all this is going on. We know Pedophile Island's real, Jeffrey Epstein. We know Clinton. Uh, Bill went there 20-something times. We know that the law enforcement is saying they're going to have a press conference. He's sexting, you know, wiener, underage girls. We know that Bill Clinton went and, and, and practiced voodoo. That's in the Washington Post, his own book he wrote. We know these people are into the occult, but you knew them back when this was happening. So it's a very important facet. Now, I don't know about all this code word and kids and all the Reddit and big Internet sites out there saying, Alex, why aren't you saying all this is code word for them? You know, well, they say, well, I'll have entertainment, three little kids in the hot tub for you at the farmhouse, and we've got all the wieners you want, you know, and the, the you know, there's a lot of pressure on us to get rid of this load of $20,000, uh, you know, you know, dolls for you. I mean, it, it, I mean, it sounds really bad, but I don't know what it is. What are you, as somebody that's been around these people, what the hell's going on? You know, Alex, all I can tell you is, and finally, I had to go to your I literally had to go to her to try to get her to stop. I went to her. I said, Hillary, if we get caught when you go into this witch's church, we're done. I mean, this is, you know, this is the early 80s, late 70s, whatever time it was. And I said, there's no way we can cover it up. But I said, here's, she said, there's no way she's going to go. I said, well, then do this. I knew Channel 11 crew, TV, local TV station in Little Rock. I said, look, you go to the Methodist church every Sunday. I'm going to set the crew, get you coming out of the church. Now it's just happened, just like I'm going to tell you. No, you told me 20 years ago. You told me 20 years ago. 
Yeah, you're going to come out of the church, and then you're going to talk about how happy you were to be in church and how you and profess Jesus Christ and God and all that. She turned away from me, folks. She turned away. But before she took a step, she turned her head back to the left, and she said, you know I can't do that, and turned her head back around and walked away. Now, my problem is I don't know about the occult. I don't understand that junk. Bill she's told she's that pledged herself. Told what else did Bill tell you? What else have you not told people? Well, Bill would tell me about, you know, he liked to deal with the voodoo junk. I said, voodoo? He said, well, it wasn't about that. It was about the dope. You know, he said, man, they do all kinds of neat drugs, psychedelic drugs. So I don't know that his voodoo experience had that much to do with it being, a, I guess, a religion, as it did for him to be able to have, you know, psychedelic drugs. Now, I just got a text, Alex, just got it. It's from the senior FBI guy. I remember there were five that told me what was going on. Well, this morning, they just, just, they're listening to us now, and he just sent me a text. Two of the five received memos this morning stating that due to budgetary adjustments, they were going to be forced to take early retirement, and the third of the three is to turn in his letter of resignation Monday. So there you go. There you go. I mean, they're 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 cooing out the final good men and women as we speak now. Again, Bill Clinton's in the Washington Post and his own book saying he loves voodoo. I mean, this is how disconnected it, you know, uh, how, you know, you know how hardcore this is. And then you've got Hillary involved in all this, and then we find out it's the most hardcore Aleister Crowley crap there is. Uh, and 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 then you're trying to get her to go. To, listen, it was in mainstream news, Washington Post as well, that she does these seances for the dead, and liberals will be there. Well, if you can call it the dead, Hillary, she's just getting them roped in. That's the first level of the occult. Can we talk to Jesus? And she says that's the one person we don't talk to. <laughs> yeah, she said I can't. You know I can't do that. But now. that back, you told me that 20 years ago. Then yeah. a decade ago, the Washington Post asked. They were like, oh, she does seances. Who, who would she talk to? Well, not Jesus. She'd let you nope. talk to anybody but Jesus. What is that? I mean, this lady is a veritable d devil. Alex, it goes back to what I've told you since the day you and I met. You know, Bill's a good timer, folks. That's all he is. He's an inch deep, mile wide. Hillary is cold-blooded. And I go back to the Benghazi hearing when she was talking about four dead Americans and she's their hands up. What, what difference, difference does it, does it make? Yeah. Now, that's the heart of as cold a human being as you're ever going to find. Not to mention when a person she had had a 10-year affair with, Vince Foster, when she's in California, hears he's dead, that he died. She gets on a plane. But instead of coming back to Washington, I've got the Central Flying Service record. She lands in Little Rock, goes to their office at the Rose Law Firm, ransacks his office, gets everything boxed up that has Hillary and Vince on it, and tells them to burn it. Well, you talk about coal, buddy. That's coal. Well, I got to say, 20 years, we've been, talking, we've been talking 20 years. You you are dead on. And we appreciate you, Larry. Please come back on tomorrow during the 52-hour broadcast. Kicks, kicks off at well, 11 a.m. Let me, let me tell you one thing. Alex. Everybody's got to do this now. All of this stuff looks bad. But folks, you better get out and vote. And I'll say this to you, and this is going to sound terrible, but I'm going to say it to every white American conservative. You better get out and vote. Because it's going to be your last chance. And again, it's not racially based. The media has made it racially based. That's right. And I have, look, I have no choice but to tell the truth about it, Alex. I don't. I don't like it in the black conservatives. Well, Larry, we know Clinton what's Clinton. going on in Arkansas, the whole background of the Clintons, and that they're race-based. They've just flipped the other way. I just want everybody to live in peace, but it is racially based. It's very sad. And, but the people voting racially are going to be screwed over. God bless you tomorrow. Thank Larry. Let's talk. Let's set you up now for tomorrow. 52-hour broadcast kicks off at 11 a.m. Central, infowars.com forward slash show. Be part of the revolution against tyranny. Spread that link. Now, Facebook mentions it's still streaming. I'm going to go hit the boys' room, take a break, and walk in there and broadcast for hours more out of my office because wild horses can't drag me away. Fabulous job to the crew. God bless you.